Top four hold strong in KC. Also, Mike Boyton is out at Oklahoma State. Thoughts on that and more coming up on today's Big 12 Watch. I am your host, Josh Neighbors, here on Crystal Ball College Football. We are part of the 365 Sports Network. You all can find us wherever you get your podcasts, and you all can find us on YouTube. Uh, if you are a longtime listener and watcher, you might be saying, ah, Josh's voice is going. Uh, that must mean it's springtime. So, folks, I live in Arkansas. Whenever there is a significant weather change, my voice always goes it, it without fail. It's just kind of a combination of allergies, whatever. But we are hitting the point where it's getting warm. We're in the 70s this week. And also, it rained a bunch. So, like, we're getting all the weird weather stuff all at once. And uh, my, my uh, internal just whatever does not like it. So, I'm going to fight through it best we can good news it's a friday show heading into the weekend so we'll rest the voice a bit we'll to obviously do a post game show for the big 12 championship game tomorrow and on sunday we'll have some reaction but uh my four hour it's a selection sunday my four hour radio show is not gonna happen so that's that's good news that i do every morning um yeah so today's show gonna tackle first and foremost mike boyton getting fired which it, it should have happened it's the right call to do um but like, and everybody says this about a lot of coaches, Mike Boyden though, was especially a really good dude. Um, Robbie Toronto says this, and I think I echo everything that all of the folks at Sirius XM thought I was a big 12 radio there for three years. Um, Mike Boyden, when they, when I say he was the man, the man, like this guy, every single week would show up and do an appearance on the radio with Ari Temkin and Dave Archer most of the time. And he would even come on our show sometime as well, sometimes as well, the afternoon show. But always a professional and really good insight, like cares about the kids. Um, and was dealt a really crappy hand with how the NCAA treated him. And you've seen a lot of support for Mike Boyton online, uh, I think from fans and whatnot. But, you know, for him, success, it wasn't always there. He was 119 and 109. Um, you know, it was 41% uh, winning percentage in conference. 21 and 15, 12 and 20, 18 and 14, 21 and 9, 15 and 15, 20 and 16, 12 and 20. One appearance in the NCAA tournament. Obviously, that was with Cade Cunningham. He's just 42 years old. I think Mike Boyden's got a lot of ball left, and sometimes you have to fail to get yourself going in the right direction. But I love Mike Boyden. Um, I always love dealing with him. He he does actually care about his players. Like I, I really do believe that, um, You know, at least from what I can tell. And so uh, wishing him the best, obviously. But Oklahoma State now has an opening. West Virginia has an opening. And now you think about, okay, um, who are the coaches that you would go after? And there's a lot of big names that are out there. Uh, you know, I think and I'm going to go from the Tulsa world. They've got a, uh, a list here. So I'll go through that. But uh, I think you're going to see a lot of the names that you hear a lot, right? Uh, I think you're going to hear about, obviously, uh, Dusty May, you know, is one that I think a lot of people want. Uh, I think somebody like that would be a good fit for them if you can score him. Uh, the coach at USF will be kicked around as well. Um, but I, I think in terms of like coaches at the lower level, right? You're thinking about okay, uh, Brian DeVries at Drake after a great year, Amir Abdurrahim at South Florida, Bucky McMillan at Samford. That one, they, they've had a fantastic season, really done a great job. Uh, Preston Spradlin at Morehead State, Will Wade at McNeese, Josh Schertz at Indiana State, Bryce Drew at Grand Canyon, uh, John Jacobs is an assistant for the Baylor Bears. Obviously, Scott Drew is, uh, or excuse me, Scott Drew's tree includes Jerome Tang. Uh, and I'll, I did see Johnny Dawkins at UCF as a candidate. I, Dawkins already has, has a pretty good, I mean, like UCF basketball is not obviously the football. And I honestly, I actually think they had a pretty good year. Number one. Um, I'm wondering how much patience there will be with him just because like they don't win a ton. And I think they went to the tournament. I only think about one time he's 62. So I was 60 like as well as what I'm saying. Um, one NCAA appearance since he's been there. So um, yeah, I'm kind of curious about his position there because he's won a decent amount and he's been 500 in conference like overall wondering how that translates to the big 12 i don't think they'd go in that direction um but yeah i think it's good i think there's a lot of good major candidates out there like you know i think obviously indiana state and drake those two teams have had spectacular seasons 
uh, you know, VCU coaches just seem to get poached like crazy, right? And they VCU in, in Virginia. Um, Shaka Smart, obviously. Uh, Anthony Grant, who's at Dayton. Uh, and hey, maybe he maybe he's a candidate, right? Maybe you think about him. I, I think he kind of likes that job. And Dayton's actually pretty deep. It's turned into a really good program. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think about the coach at VCU uh, right now. Brian Odom. Brian Odom. But he's already moved a bunch. Uh, Will Wade, though, if, if you could score Will Wade, that would be huge. Uh, I do not think any SEC coaches are going to get fired this year in basketball off the top of my head. Maybe Mike White is in some trouble, but I don't think he is. Um, I, I'm trying to think of any. Oh, Jerry Stackhouse got fired, but I don't know if Will Wade would go to Vanderbilt. Like he had such a good year at McNeese. Um, he can do a lot better than that. And I think Oklahoma State would be smart to look at a Will Wade and try to get him there. But other jobs might open. He might be, you know, he might be going, I mean, big time, right? If, like if you're, if you're Louisville, you should 100% consider uh, Will Wade. So there's a lot of options out there. I think there's a lot of good coaches out there at both the major level, mid-major level, right? So you're trying to think about like, hey, could you get a coach like a Johnny Dawkins? I, I think, I mean, I think he would. I, I think he would do it if you made him the the right kind of offer. Because um, Oklahoma State does have, have a little bit better basketball, has a little bit better. Oklahoma State has a better basketball tradition than UCF. There's no doubt about that. So it's an interesting, uh, it's going to be now an interesting exercise, right? For the folks at Oklahoma State, Chad Weiberg, to see if they can, figure out that the nice thing for them is football coach is taking care of basically for as long as he wants it as much as his flirtations used to happen that being mike gundy um i don't think that's happening as much anymore so it's pretty safe on that front all right let's talk about some of the games yesterday and talk about like kind of where the big 12 is as a whole so the top four seeds held serve okay so you're having now a top four Big 12 championship uh, situation, final four, I should say. Also, I love the fact that these games are later in the day. The 6 p.m., 8 p.m. happening on a Friday, or 8.30, I should say, uh, happening on a Friday. That's really good to me. I love that. Also, I like your conference tournament ending on Saturday. The reason why, that Big 10 championship game kind of feels useless because I think a lot of the seeds are kind of worked out already. Now, you might have some tentative positions. The, the committee might say, hey, if X happens, then we'll put team here, team one here, team two here. If team Y wins, we'll put that one team one here, team two here. So maybe, but I like the fact that like you're giving the committee time to consider. All these teams are safely in, obviously, being the top four seeds. Um, and yesterday's results, you know, the guys, I mean, not all of them were blowouts, right? Uh, yesterday, those games are not all blowouts, but... Uh, all of them ended up being double-digit margins. Um, Houston just took a jackhammer to to TCU. I mean, that defensive performance that Houston put on was a that was a masterclass. TCU could not get any good looks at all. It was really impressive to watch. And um, Houston's a favorite to win this thing. I think people are concerned about what happens if things go cold for them. But like, you're gonna have to run into. I mean, they're gonna have to run into a really elite team on both sides of the ball because their offense is good enough to win. Like, you know, you're, like you're going to need a UConn basically uh, a UConn type team. Cause I've actually thought TCU's defense pretty good yesterday, but you need like a UConn type team, a Purdue type team uh, really to, to lay the wood to Houston. I mean, there's so many good teams this league and Houston was fantastic all season long. Right. So another win for them, Iowa State, that felt like an NCAA tournament game yesterday. Obviously, K-State needs to win that game desperately, right? Iowa State, though, a big second half. They ended up pulling away. I, I love the way that it felt like different guys were getting loose, getting free. They scored 42 points that second half. And on a day where they were one for 14 from three, they went to the line a bunch and made a bunch of free throws. Uh, this was a physical, chippy game. 40 fouls were called in total in this game but uh, the turnovers to me 20 of them and the quality of shot to me was the big difference um and that's been a huge issue for k-state this year look i know they lost two guys and their depth has not been there because of that right it's been a it's been a huge challenge for them um that being said uh they could be cleaner with the basketball even though guys are playing high minute totals and Perry at 18 yesterday, mostly because of the way he got to the line. I mean, he hit three threes too, um, but a strong day for him, but he also had four turnovers. 
And then Cam Carter yesterday had nine points on two of 10 shooting and he had three turnovers and Kaluma was the ball in a lot of spots had four turnovers, even though it was five and nine, like uh, Iowa state shot uh, seven more times. And honestly, it should have been a lot more. They also went to the line eight more times. If you just give yourself more possessions, basketball is math. And like, you're going to win the game. K state 19 and 14, eight and 10 in the league, their conference records good. And if you go to the net ratings, and you look at where Kansas State is right now. Um, they did really good, like some really good work in quadrant one. But the issue for them is they're, let's see, they're 70th right now. They're five and eight in quad one. They're four and five in quad two. So if you put that together, you're nine and 13 in quadrant one and two games. It just feels like they didn't rack up enough big wins, right? Providence win looks good, but that's still just a bubble team. Uh, Villanova's a bubble team. Um, you know, LSU is not a bubble team, right? UCF was, you know, borderline, uh, tech, um, Baylor obviously was one of their strongest wins. Kansas, one of their strongest wins, BYU, a very strong win. And then, then beating Iowa state last week and beating Texas really good wins, but they didn't do a lot of good work away from home. There was really no big game they had away uh, from their own building where they got a significant victory this year. Actually, I, I don't think they won. They won against West Virginia on the road. So like that is their, oh, that is their uh, lone road win in Big 12 play. Jerome Tang, I still think, is an incredibly good coach. I, I don't think that changed at all. In my opinion of him has not changed much this year. The team could have been a bit more under control, but I mean – you don't, they don't grow Marquise Noel's on trees, right? And you can't just replace Naquan Tomlin. I thought Kaluma fought his tail off and tried to do the best he could. I thought Perry and Carter did the best they could, but they just need some more depth on that team. I mean, they, and they were going to have it, but it just didn't work out for them. So uh, I, they're on the bubble still. I just, there's a case for them, but I just, I just don't see it. I, I just don't see them getting in. Um, and yesterday, uh, obviously, you know, on the other side of things, Iowa State, like, really good job by them late in the game. Uh, Baylor, 68-56. This game sucked. It was ugly. It was, I mean, it was a close game, but, like, it was really ugly. Baylor got off to a horrific start and then corrected that. And then they ended up having four guys in double figures. They were 5-19 and 19 from three in this game. Um, it, the, the shooting percentages, I mean, like, both teams are at 40. Both teams are sub-30 on three. And then both teams, and the big difference was Baylor got to the line uh, 22 times, making 19. Cincinnati, nine times, made seven, right? More physical team. And they kind of... Uh, shot their watch 20 and 14 though is a really good year for them uh, that's a strong year for west miller that's going to be an nit team i believe and they were pushing making you know some, some tournament noise that was a strong year for west miller's group at least in my opinion I, I thought it was a good start to his tenure as a big 12 coach um so I, I think there's a lot of upside at cincinnati i think he's looks like he could be the right guy for the job texas tech then i mean some of the first game of the day guys texas tech really uh they they put it on uh, BYU in a pretty significant way early on. I mean, this game was, they were off to, I think, a 10-0 lead. Uh, it was an efficient, more efficient Pop Isaacs game. He had 22 points, two assists, three rebounds, nine of 19 shooting, three seven from deep. Uh, they were nine for 19 from deep as a team, and they shot 50% from the floor, and they were really good on defense. And this is the one worry about BYU is as balanced as their scoring can be, and their starters actually did not do a great job yesterday. As balanced as their starters can be, and once again, I know that Robinson comes off the bench and leads them in scoring. Um, they do struggle defensively, so on bad nights, like it just feels like they can't clamp teams the way other teams can clamp. To, you know, Iowa, Iowa State can if they can't score, a way that Houston can if they can't score. I know there's elite teams in the league, but they have that potential, that ability to really tighten the screws. Even Baylor tightened the screws yesterday. Um, I don't know if BYU can do that. But I mean, still really good team and having a great season. Texas Tech, though, I think it's the kind of result you wanted to see, right? You you wanted to see them go out there because you don't like their chances today against a uh, against Houston, just because Houston's been so good. But you like for Tech the fact that they've won four straight games, right? <coughs> and they've beat Baylor uh, by by ten, and they beat BYU by fourteen, and that was not really that close of a game. So. They're playing really well. I mean, they've got four straight wins. All of them are, are by double digits right now. Uh, they're scoring more, and their defense is allowed 70, 58, 68, 67. So they're playing really good defense. Pop Isaacs in the last three games has had 19, 20, and 22. Right, so you love the way that they are, uh, you know, right now rebounding the basketball, uh, the way they're moving the basketball. The guards, Toussaint, Kerwin, Walton, and uh, and 
uh, Pop Isaacs, right? It's those guys. That I think you have some pretty good connectivity. Yesterday, they totaled for 46 points between the three of them. And obviously, Darian Williams uh, being on the perimeter has been really good for them, too. So I think that uh, the top four seeds is a reason those teams earn the top four seeds. And not much peril yesterday, to be honest. Like the Cincinnati Baylor game was weird, but not much peril. Houston played like crap on offense, never really in peril. Texas Tech was handling business all that game. Iowa State, you know, that game was close ish for a while, but they kept they kept K State at arm's length for of the entire game, basically. And then they really turned on the Jets late in the game. So we've got the right four teams. And I think you've got two really exciting matchups. The one I'm most excited about tonight in this, uh, these, these two games, I'm really looking forward to Baylor, Iowa state, um, Iowa state's a one and a half point favorite. I feel like Baylor is the most dangerous big 12 team outside of Houston because of how many guys they've got on the perimeter. When you've got Ray J Dennis and you've got Jacoby Walter and you've got, uh, Jaden Nunn and you've got, uh, um, uh, I'm forgetting the kid's name, um, Bridges, Jalen Bridges as well. You've got all the, and then you've got even Missy inside. You've got so much to turn to. And once again, not the deepest team in the world. So, you know, that, that's one concern for them, but you've got all of these guys who can contribute significantly in, in these big games. And, you know, they get the 16 minutes from Loner last night, 12 uh, from our guy, uh, Josh Oj I found Ojuano. I always mess it up. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, once again, it's mostly a five man uh, operation here, which does concern you a little bit. But it wasn't like the, um, you know, there was some depth on the championship team they had. What's his face came off the bench? Uh, other really gar good guard they had. So they did have some depth in the championship team at the guard spot. And obviously, Flo Thamba would come out. And they'd basically just go four out, five out, or four around Mark Vital. But um, yeah, this team still, I think, has got the potent weapons. They're not that good uh, compared to that team. But I, I like this game against Iowa State because Iowa State's shown the ability to score too. I think it's going to be a lower scoring game. I think that's reflected here in the total. 134 and a half um, is a total. Iowa State, one and a half point favorite. And then the first game, Texas Tech against Houston. Houston, again, is laying nine and a half. Just a lot of confidence on how good defensively those guards are because the strength of Texas Tech is at the guard position. And um, even though that's their strength, Houston's better than them. Uh, Houston might have as many of them, uh, but Houston, well, I know. I mean, Houston has as many, I guess three, right? But uh, Houston's just better. They've got better guards. So that's why I would roll with the Houston Cougars in that game. But setting up really well, um, it sucks that Cincinnati and K-State couldn't push their way into the final round to make this the final weekend to make this thing interesting. K-State is a first team in next four out. So Look, it's not. It would not be the most insane thing in the world for K State to make it. I think it's going to be hard for them to make it. But A um, and M right now is in, according to Lenardi. Colorado won yesterday. They're in. Virginia's in. I think Seton Hall and St. John's are in. Like these teams are all still left and playing right now. So uh, a lot of these teams, you know, there's just not opportunities to like for K State to have teams drop out. You know, and have bad losses, whatever. Um, I mean, they're going to need these teams to hopefully get nuked but it's going to be tough for them to move up. All right, that will do it for today's show. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at NWPod365. You guys can find me at Josh Neighbors underscore. You guys can find the show wherever you all get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. Enjoy your weekend, friends.